Hello, my name is Citra360. I am a digital artist. This is a tutorial. I'll be going over hair. How to draw digital hair for cartoons. What we'll be discussing is how to develop the volume, the toned contrast, and how to make it appear realistic rather than solid objects that you see with most cartoon hairs today. Here's a tricky subject, especially when you get into color. You gotta keep in mind that hair, it is fluid, it has form, it overlaps itself, it has density. Hair is not flat, you gotta think of hair as a 3D object. And if you want to be really creative, you can uh, have hair overlap itself in curls, bangs, and other various hairstyles. When you draw hair, I recommend finding some reference photos of people with real hair and see how see how it interlocks. Study how the hair flows from the crane from the, the skull and overlaps itself and how the light hits the hair. It's a very interesting progress and hair is something I really love drawing so I have a lot of practice under my belt and today I'll be sharing that knowledge with you. So let's make a, a new canvas here. Make sure your resolution is about 300 at 300 and let's see width about 2500 pixels and height about also 2500 pixels we're going to make it keep this simple before we start painting I'm going to talk about the different types of hair that exist the first one is the most common type of hair and that is long straight flowy hair. Very common hairstyle for women. There we go. As I mentioned before, make sure you look up some reference photos of hair and see how it works. Even though this is straight long hair, some areas actually do overlap each other it flows around the contours of the face and falls down towards the ground because of gravity. We don't want hair going this way or hair going that way unless it was very messy. Sometimes the top of the hair comes back towards the face and overlaps itself. And the hair that was originally behind starts peeking out and exposing itself to the world. This is what I mean by hair having volume. Sketch hair as often as you like. It's very, it's very fun. It's very fun. Trying to figure out the organic elements that hair has. There we go. As you can see, the hair on top came underneath the hair that was originally underneath. The reason why I like drawing hair like that is it gives it a little bit of density, volume, indicating that it has some 3D depth to it. Another kind of hair is uh, wavy, curly hair. This is hair that will overlap itself. This hair is very fun to do because you're pretty much weaving in and out like a chain of hair. Always try and figure out where hair will go. Will it overlap? Will it go under? Will it be visible? As I mentioned, find some reference photos and observe how the hair behaves. To keep it simple, draw huge clumps of hair that goes underneath and over other huge clumps of hair. So just like this, we have the beginnings of some curly hair. And you can keep going with other hair areas and keep going, keep going until you fill up the, the crane, the cranium of the head or the side of the face with just interlocking hair over and over again.
Another type of hairstyle is messy hair. You know what it's like. Bed head, brush of air hitting your face, the works. Even though it's a bit random, there is some organization to this chaos. You want to have some hair overlapping the hair in the background. As I mentioned before, hair overlaps itself and has some depth. It has some 3D depth to it. It is not flat. Sometimes you want to introduce some new clumps of hair on top of the hair on top. To keep things more simple, draw the hair in clumps. Sorry if my sketchiness is a little hard to read. Just em emphasizing the point how easy this can be if you just simply sketch it out. And then later, refine it a little bit. Alright. So we got our long, wavy hair where it just flows from the top of the head and down over the face into the, gra into the ground due to gravity. We have interlocking hair curly interlocking flow flowy hair and we have some messy disorganized hair hair in itself like the body you're drawing has a whole nother characteristic to it, it has personality whether it's clean nicely brushed kept firm or messy all over the place it gives the character well its character and it's very worthwhile lo looking into how to draw different hairstyles because there is a lot of them. You can easily look up online hairstyles and take and practice the different ones that are out there. It's really worthwhile. Alright, before we begin, um, any questions before we get into coloring hair realistically? Alright. Let's do long curly hair to keep it simple. Very easy character to do this with is Fluttershy from the character My Little Pony from the show My Little Pony. There we go, basic head. We want to actually do this very loose and go straight into the painting. She has long, wavy hair. So you have to treat the hair as such. It may overlap the neck a little bit. Draw in some clumps. And some under hair to just give a little bit extra boost. As I mentioned before, the top hair can overlap itself and the hair underneath can expose. There we go. And we're done. Very simple hair. Very simple sketch. Alrighty. We're going to get a solid base color. Her hair is pink. So let's add some pink, turn off our, our button up here. That is the pressure for opacity, where it forces the tablet pen's pressure control the opacity. So that means we're going to be painting in 100% opacity, no opaque pixels. All righty. There we go. I'm going to also erase some of the X's. Don't have to be perfect. 
There we go. Whoops. All right, for now, we're going to lock the pixels of this layer. To do that, make sure you select the layer we put the colors on and hit the lock transparency pixels button up here. That way we can't paint outside the, the, uh, the lines. All right, with a soft brush, we're going to pick a darker shade color and move the color picker a little bit to the red zone. This is a third party color picker. You will now have this in Photoshop. It's called Coolerus. Over here, you may more be for more familiar with the color picker. Just slide this up and down to pick different colors. Turn back the pressure to opacity button so we have control again. And do some basic shadows. Keep in mind where your light source is. For, for me, it would be from the top right. Keep in mind the hair is a 3D solid object. All right, let's add some, some highlights. There we go. Maybe perhaps add some purple. Let's go to the purple area, a little bit darker. A little more desaturation. We don't want to be too saturated. There we go. All right, let's turn down the opacity of the sketch layer down to, to where you can barely see it. And let's turn the background color a little bit darker on desaturated tones so we can see the colors more clearly. I like to use a desaturated brown as my background color. Hit Alt Delete to quickly fill the area with the desaturated brown. And in fact, let's make it a little bit more darker. There we go. Now I can see the colors a little more better and the white background is not overbearing. Ignore the dogs outside. <laughs> Alright, make a new layer above your sketch layer so that way we'll be painting on top of everything. In fact, if you're feeling a little daring, you can merge the sketch layer with the hair layer. I like to do that sometimes, but if you're just starting, don't do that. Alright, open up your brush panel and set the hardness level to around 75%. To find the brush panel, you can hit go to Window, Brush, and you can even set it aside as a, as a panel so you have it for easier grasp. Alright, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be blending the hair together, finalizing the shading, the colors, where it's all smooth, and a bit more finished than we have right now. This is a pretty basic airbrushing. Alright, keep in mind that we no longer have the opacity locked. We're doing this freehand. There we go. Right now we're just making the colors blend a little bit more, controlling how much color we have how much light there is and we're going over the lines with a darker color indicating hair separation sorry I'm not going to be covering eyelashes we'll be focusing on hair today All right, as I was mentioning before, we're just getting the colors blended here and the and shadows and lights looking accurate. We're being very rough about it. We're not being exactly precise. Just getting the colors down that we want. We're not doing hair strands yet. 
We're just picking at the hair piece by piece in big clumps. That's, very, that's the key in drawing hair, is to first focus it as big clumps. Big individual pieces, like you know, like an arm, an ear, like you would treat an arm or an ear. Big, vague clumps, just like that. Don't worry if you go out of bounds, it's very easy to erase and fix. Alrighty. Keep in mind our light starts is coming from the top right. We're going to be adding some more color to the hair right here. More lighting, I should say. Try to make your darks dark and your lights light, making and giving yourself some good contrast. That looks a bit better. Ignore the dogs in the background. <laughs> They're just happy to see someone who just came in. <laughs> As I mentioned, you can change the size of the brush fairly easily. If you have a Wacom or other type of stylus, usually you have a shortcut control that you can manage to control the brush size. Um, for me, I have a touch ring that can easily change the size of the brush very easily. Another way is going out to the top left and changing the size of the brush as needed. Keep the brush size big. We're just focusing on color blending. We're not trying to do any details at the moment. There we go. As you can see, I'm trying to get the colors looking good. Adding some light, some darks. Don't go. Color picker is the best example. Don't go straight up and down on the color picker scale. You don't want to look. You don't want your shading to look monochromatic or left and right. It's not very good shading or coloring technique. Instead, if you want to add a little bit more darkness, go bottom right and change the hue of the color a little bit different. So instead of a desaturated looking red. We got a purple to go along on top of the original pink. And thus we have a much more pleasing looking shadow color. Just like that. That will be that's a very quick tip on how to actually color things a little bit better. And avoiding that muddy color that most beginning artists usually suffer with. As I'm shading, I know a lot of you are probably thinking, why is he not using that burn tool or color tool? Or, isn't that how you color? Isn't that how you shade? Actually, no. That's, uh, you don't use the burn and dodge tool for coloring or shading. Sure, there may be some useful uses for it, and I'll be actually using it later. But the best way of coloring and shading hair is actually using the color picker and the brush. And I'm not doing any fancy brushes at the moment. It is just the basic round brush set to a 0% hardness level. The opacity of my brush is also being handled by the tablet. The opacity is being controlled by the pressure of my pen. And that is done with this function up here next to the opacity button. It forces the opacity levels be controlled by the pen. Alrighty. Keep in mind, hair is 3D, it is it has depth. There we go. Viewer on the live stream has a very good question. How about the values? I don't have that much time to get into the topic of values the elevator pitch of what values are is pretty much 
how well the, reckon, the object actually stands out. An easy way to check in the values of your, of your coloring is by making a new layer, a new adjustment layer, down here which looks like a half moon. Click on it, black and white. There we go. And these are the values, where white is white, black is back, black. It basically turns your drawing in grayscale. A good drawing with very excellent values is where you have some very clearly defined blacks and very clearly defined whites. If it's too grayscale, like right now, I'm not that fellow, my value's a little bit weak, it blends into the background, it gets lost. And that's not that good if you want to do realism artist, realistic artist, because realism has a broad range of values. So it's a good layer to have to have turn on and off to quickly check how well your values are going. Since it seems like I don't have that good of values, I'm going to add some more darks here, some more darks there. My, my light seems to be perfect. It's okay. I just need to add more darks to the hair. So to do that, I'm going to get back on the original hair color, get a little bit more dark, and as I mentioned before, shift to hue levels. There we go. We're getting a little bit more darkness inside of her hair here. And let's see, we're adding a little bit more darkness here as well. There we go. It's already looking a little bit more better and popping. It pops out real well. Same with here. Getting the values controlled. I'm color picking colors I believe will look good from other parts of the hair with a color picker. At the top of the hair, the, the brightest point is usually not at the very tip of the edge, but actually in the middle. And then when you get to the edge, you actually put a little bit more color back into it since the hair is rounding over. Think of it as a, think of it as like a, a oval can. If you ever shaded cans before, you know what I'm talking about, where the brightest part of the can is actually not at the very edge, unless it has an edge rim lights. All right, let's check our values again, and that looks much better, much, much better. Still a little weak, but we're still developing the colors, so we don't have to worry about that too much. I know some artists are probably groaning because they really developed the values early on, and I'm sorry. <laughs> Alrighty, now we're getting into the next step into coloring realistic hair. We got the basic shading down, we got our lights, we got our darks, we form the hair, we develop where the hair will overlap itself, just like so. We got the basic colors down. This is what uh, artists likes to call blocking. We have blocked the hair in. Next, we're going to be taking this a little bit further and form and finalizing the shading in clumps. Like let's say this piece right here. This this piece of hair clump right here. We're just going to be focusing on that. And as before, we're going to keep our brush big. We're not doing any details yet. Let's add some pink back in there. There we go. I want to save my brightest brights until the very end. Because the details will actually have the brightest brights and the darkest of darks. I hold off from pushing those, those uh, values in until near the end. This takes some time understanding how to color and shade. I practice a lot from photo references. I recommend you do that. It's not cheating to color from photo references. In fact, all professional artists do that. I mean, how else will they know how to draw, right? <laughs> Life is full of references, especially hair. 
and hair has a bit more volume and complexity than what I'm drawing right now but we don't really need to have that much detail on something for a cartoon there we go just drawing the things in clumps not worrying about any hair strands at the moment When this video is done, I recommend just sketching. Sketching the hair in black and white. Don't worry about colors. Focus on the shading. And once you have your values down, you understand how hair volumes work, then maybe perhaps you get into sh the coloring, the shading. Keep in mind, hair like blonde hair isn't pure yellow or pure white. Blonde hair is very tricky, as it actually absorbs many other colors, like green, brown. Oh boy, it's very blonde hair is definitely something. You definitely need some reference if you're drawing blonde hair. And who has the most blonde hair of all the characters in My Little Pony? Applejack. See you, Volps. Thanks for you for coming. Volps is a uh, viewer on the live stream right now. There we go. Just making the hair look less flat, a little bit more, you know, rounded like this. We're making sure the hair looks rounded. Not flat, but rounded. And my brush strokes are going alongside the flow of the hair, as you can see. I'm not going back and forth. I'm not going side to side. I'm going to the flow of the hair. My brush is still at soft. It still has 0% hardness. Changing the size of the brush as I go. And just using my artist's intellect where I should shade and where I should develop. I see right here I'm just forming more clumps of hair. Just trying to think, where will hair pop out? What will hair overlap at? Will hair even exist here? And what I mean by that is sometimes hair just disappears. And just becomes unnecessary detail if you try to form hair every single place on, on the face. There we go. As you can see, we're getting a little bit more realistic looking hair. Right now, this kind of looks a little plastic, but that's all right. We're just form. We're just getting the depth and the colors and the lighting finalized. Now for the top. Very lightly, very br light brush strokes. Getting the pink into the hair, adding in the purple, using the color picker. Just really trying to control how much color and lighting and shadow there is. Trying to make it look right. Don't worry if you're not going as fast as me. I had a lot of practice. In fact, when I was drawing realistic hair when I, for the first time, it took me hours, many hours, compared to how fast I'm doing it now. So, don't worry if it takes you that long as well. I'm not some sort of gauge, some sort of way to gauge how fast you are going. I'm not atrial. <laughs> so... Just take your time. Don't worry about the clock. Throw the clock away even. <laughs> Just get lost in painting the hair. Getting those clumps in. Getting the lighting looking right. 
controlling the values. When I'm drawing pink here, as I mentioned before, don't just go up and down on the color picker. It'll look desaturated. It'll look muddy. Mix in some purples, some reds, when you're shading the hair. Blue hair, some greens, some purples, yellow hair, browns, greens, any other surrounding color. So forth and so on. <laughs> That's a very nice joke. All right, I'm going to be forming the hair clumps right here. Up on top, they're a little bit more separated. So we're having some very solid grooves inside of the hair. If you just notice a like square panel with color just appeared on the screen, that is a feature in Photoshop CS6 and higher that comes from pressing the shortcut keys on the Mac Control Option Command and you just click and adjust the color around and press the space bar to switch to the hue slider. Press space bar again to switch the color and release. Very quick and easy method of changing the color on the fly. For the Windows people, I believe it's a different shortcut all in its own. So Google HUD like H U D color picker shortcut and there is a shortcut for for Windows people and if you have a tablet with a, with a pen with multiple buttons on the side go into configuration settings whatever tablet you have most configuration settings they allow you to configure the the pin buttons I have set for mine the uh, bottom button when I click brings up the brush panel and when I do the, the other button, the top button, I click and hold, it brings up the HUD color picker. So I have everything just in one pan as I go. It's very convenient and speeds up your process very easily. And I have uh, shortcuts under my Cintiq as well, where I just press a button and it is configured to, to uh, as if I'm pressing the alt button so I quickly do uh, color picking on the fly yes you're right you can look up for uh, control the shortcuts in Photoshop I find Google much easier <laughs> I don't know if that's laziness or not. Alrighty. The hair looks better. It looks a little more refined. And we're almost ready for the actual details in itself. Before we begin, let's uh, check our black and white values. Not that bad. Not that bad. We can actually go into the hair. Hit Command or Control L to bring out levels. And let's see. Let's adjust the middle slider a little to the right. See, that actually makes things a little bit more darker. And the right slider to the left a little bit. Just a little bit. We don't want to go too far like that. So just a little bit. Making the values look a little bit better. Turning preview on and off, you can see how much change there is. There we go. Yep, that looks much better. Though a little oversaturated. That's a problem using levels. You have a risk of going into oversaturation. So let's hit Control U or Command U. That brings up the Hue Saturation panel or found under Image Adjustment Hue Saturation. Let's turn down the saturation just a tad, maybe negative five. So that way we're not oversaturating our drawing too much. All right, let's start detailing this a little bit. 
All right, set the hardness level back up a little bit. I like the 75, the 70% 70 range for this. That way my brush strokes are a little hard, but yet have a soft edge at the same time. We'll be using a color picker a lot. So grab a color that is a little dark and with a big brush, just go into the, to the light, just a little bit. So we're going from dark to light, color picker, light to dark. So we have very small hands of hair. Don't overdo it. We're not doing this. We're not doing that. We're not doing this. We're not doing that. We're just being very soft with it. We're still not getting into detail stages yet. Drawing realistic hair, it comes in stages. We're overlapping the hair. So light to dark, very quick, soft brush strokes, dark to light very quick soft brush strokes just like that just like that see the hair is already kind of looking a little bit more realistic but we're not quite there yet if you feel the hair looks a little too weird go ahead and cover it back up with the with the a, a big brush and cover up the details like let's say I have too, too much of a broad hair strands right here that just stands out too much too much so we'll make our brush size bigger and set the hardness back down to zero we color pick the area we want to uh, fix and slowly brush away those annoying brush strokes that just make things a little bit awkward looking using a color picker all the same. There we go, and it's fixed. One would be subtle about it. We don't want to get too detailed yet. Just very s s small subtlety. <laughs> Thank you, Caden. <laughs> As I mentioned before, keep in mind the hair is has lots of depth and it overlaps itself. It's not flat. So we have all these clumps of hair that's hidden in the shadows. There we go. Dark to light, light to dark. And this takes some practice to have a feel of where you should add the uh, brush strokes and where you should uh, not add the brush strokes. We're not going to be covering the entire area of the hair with little tinier firms of detail. We're going to actually leave some areas completely solid color. Yes, yeah, just like that. I feel like Bob Ross actually. <laughs> the way I'm speaking, it's just how I'm trying to remind you to keep it simple. You don't want to try too much. There's a lot of truth in trying to keep things simple, even with realism art, because less is more. And you try to force the details in, it just won't look good. It just won't look good. I know I did a lot of forced details in the past, and I, was, I still kind of do it time to time. I'm trying to, I try to hold myself back because too much detail in one area, it's just not too, it's just not good. It's just not good to have. You must have control over how much detail you add to a realistic project. A little trick of understanding where you want to add detail. It's where the light is strongest, where you have the most focus. Like this clump of hair will have more detail than the hair inside here. Because the viewer will be seeing this more than that and be ignoring this. So you don't want to put too much detail here to distract 
from the other areas of the drawing. My brush strokes are still very big and I'm still doing from dark to light and light to dark. I believe, I believe, every day is a good day when you paint. I believe, I believe, it will bring a lot of good thoughts to your heart. Those were lyrics from the song Bob Rob Remix. If you haven't heard of it, YouTube it, it's very nice. There we go. See what I mean by very sl slight, subtle details? It's much better than overbearing overbearing details there we go dark to light light to dark and also as you see I'm not treating this like a flat surface we have some clumps of hair popping out and overlapping other areas we gotta keep in mind that each hair has a bit of a rounded shape to it Hair is rounded. I can't express express that enough. People on the live stream, how are you doing? Are you following along just fine? Is this stream helpful? Very much so. I'm glad it does. I'm glad it does. That's why I'm doing these tutorials. I'm hoping to spark imagination, creativity, and just a drive to do some art. And also I'd like to remind you that this is just one tutorial. It does not make any difference if you don't actually practice what I'm teaching here today. I know I made that mistake plenty of times when I was first a beginner. I watch all the tutorials, all the videos, and then I don't even practice. I just, like, for some reason, I just imagine that just watching the videos just suddenly makes me better. And I don't have to do anything else. You gotta practice. You have to practice. And I say to my friends many times, you have to experiment. My way is not the only way of drawing hair. There's many, many ways. You gotta practice, experiment, mess around with the brushes, mess around with the color picker, mess around with how you color. See what works. Add some blue to that red. Add some blue to that green. Maybe it will work. Maybe it won't. You gotta learn. You gotta test things out. I figure out how to color and shape by watching tutorial video videos and experimenting all the time. I'm still experimenting to this day. I may use a different method in the future. I know my way in coloring hair has changed over time. Artist evolves. Artist changes. Dark to light, light to dark. There we go. Isn't the hair looking beautiful? It's, it's recognizable. You can tell that it's hair. Even though it's, you know, cartoony. It's still hair. Realistic hair, like absolutely realistic hair, it will have a lot more clumps and a little bit more messy to it because realistic hair is, well, it's not perfect. Even in the beauty industry you know those models you see on TV did you know that photoshoppers actually had to edit their hair a lot they photoshopped the clumps some clumps of hair out they erased the stray hairlines they even make hair more fuller like make the hair longer more mass so even even the like the ideal perfect hairstyle are faked there is a lot of inconsistencies with real hair. If you photo reference 
real photos that are not touched up, you can easily see that happening. Yes, clump. Clump with a U. It's very mind-boggling what Photoshoppers do to uh, photos of women in, in, um, in beauty magazines, even with men. It's apparently, a, uh, it's apparently a form of beauty, having long necks. They stretch their, leg, their necks out. They even make their eyes wider. Their eyelashes more fuller. It's just like the natural human body. It's just not perfect enough. Which, you know, causes a lot of trust issues with women in their own bodies and how they look because they don't look like the models on the magazines. Well, not even the models look like the models on the magazine because <laughs> there's a whole deal of Photoshop involved in that. They use the tools to make their skinnies, their, the waist skinnier. Their skin glisten, all that jazz. All right. Yep. After a little bit of process, it took some time. We went um, doing some medium level of uh, hair stylizing. We use a big brush stroke from going from the light to dark and dark to light. We're using a color picker constantly. And now we're going to be getting into the actual details. Everyone cheer! <laughs> but before we get into that, we're going to be doing some photo editing of the hair and the colors and the lighting. Let's lock, no, let's not lock, let's merge the hairs, the layers together, even the sketch layer because the hair is even colored. Actually, let's remove it. There we go. We're merging the hair, the hair layers all together into one layer, so it's a little bit more easier to manage. Let's fix it up a little bit. There we go. All right, let's set the let's lock the uh, the the transparency of the layer once again. We're going to be picking a mid-color pink or red, I should say. Make sure the brush is hard. Not not hard, very soft, making the brush very big. We're going to set the mode to soft light or multiply. Experiment, see which one works. And the layer is merged into one, and the transparency is locked. All right, we picked a mid-tone, mid-color desaturation of the color. That's pretty much in the, right in the middle of the color picker, so we don't have too much too much color, too much uh, overlay. What we're basically doing is just adding a little bit more color back into the hair. I like adding it into the uh, shadowed areas. Just a touch, just a touch. That seems to be saturating the color a little bit too much. So let's go to multiply and set the color a little bit brighter. We don't want too much darkness into this. There we go. Mm, I f let's undo that. I feel like maybe some purple would be better. Yeah, there we go. Just very slightly. Just so, so slightly. There we go. Alrighty. Now we're going to do screen as a lightening tool. We're going to be picking a desaturated purple that's a little bit dark. That way it doesn't overpower the hair. And we're going to the very top of the hair, just slightly, very slightly. Basically, I'm doing dodge and burn, but using color blend modes instead. It allows me more control. Just slightly. There we go. Now it's looking a little bit better, a little bit more realistic. And if we check our black and white, the values are looking very good. 
a little bit more value control, but that's all right. The values at least look recognizable. All right. Now we're going to get into the fine details. We want to set our hardness in the 70% range. I like 75, 78%. We're going to make the brush size a little bit smaller, but not fine, not fine hair just yet. Make sure our mode is back to normal. We're not going to do any fancy tricks yet. As we did before, we're going from light to dark, very lightly, and dark to light, just like that. And keep it a little bit spaced out, not all clumped down together. Just like that. We're not going all the way from light all the way down to dark. We're not doing that. Just a little bit in the brightest and darkest of areas. This here is where we're actually getting into the detail. But we're still at the same time keeping ourselves in check. We don't want to add too much. Just a little bit to indicate there's hair. Dark to light, light to dark. Yep, too much. Looks like I did some good details already right here. I don't have to overlap that. This is, when I when I paint realism, I like to call the different levels of detail in sages. I had the blocking stage where I'm just laying down the colors and sh the basic shading. I have the uh, first level refinement stage where I just take things in clumps and finalize the shading and coloring. Then I have the, uh, the third stage where I do some medium level detail. And then this stage is the pre-refined state, the pre-detail stage, where we're adding some detail, but keeping the brush size a little bit big. We're almost to the, the uh, absolute detail stage, and that's actually pretty pretty quick, surprisingly, and you'll see why. Hope I didn't lose anybody. Let me know if you have a question of what I'm doing. Feel free to keep, feel free to ask a question. Make sure you use bold so I can see the question, and make sure you turn off bold if you're not asking me a question. Those people who are lurking while watching, don't be afraid to ask questions yourself. There's about 32 viewers here, so I know maybe some of you have a question and haven't spoken in the chat yet. Light to dark, dark to light. Very quick flow, brush strokes. Color picker is your friend. Don't want to over blend. You don't want to have too many small details. That just become horse hair, straw hair, sorry. When you get into the bright area, you want to don't put too much details in it. Leave a few brush strokes that goes all the way through it, and that's it. Just like that. Thunder. It's getting a little stormy here, so I hope we don't lose you guys. There we go. As you can see right here, there's some big clumps of hair. Sometimes I make the brush size a little bit bigger if I need to be. So we have this clump of hair and that clump of hair. And this clump of hair going underneath the others and having a little bit more shadow to it. And I kind of feel this is a bit too flat right here. So let's actually get a little bit creative. Unlock the transparency tool right there. There we go. Let's make that a little bit less flat. If 
If you think something looks flat, it probably is. Sometimes when you're coloring hair like this, you can actually introduce a complementary color. Like in this case, we can add a little bit more blues to it. Just like that. Not too bright. And I blend it in. Yeah, a little bit of rim lighting. There we go. Light to dark, dark to light. Add a little bit more darkness to it. There we go. That looks good. Yeah, it's very, it's getting a little more stormy. There we go. That looks better. Don't you agree? There we go. I'm switching between medium detail and pre-detail where I see fit. Sometimes I put some broad strokes and some tinier strokes. Just getting a feel where it should be added. This comes from a lot of practice, a lot of trial and error. I've been drawing hair a long time, even before ponies, before cartoons. In fact, it's one of the things I practice a lot with color, with uh, just just pencils, uh, graphite pencils. As I as I mentioned before, I love drawing hair. It's just so relaxing once you get in the mood of it, the swing of the swing of things. Just just trying to make things look nice, make it look like hair. It's just amazing. I, get, I, I find myself get lost in just drawing hair, adding a little detail here, blending a little, blending a line here that just seems unnecessary. It's, it's just, it's just amazing. Some people, they love drawing the face. Some people, they love, love drawing the, 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 ch the, the legs. All artists has their own little preference. For me, it's the hair. I kind of feel like the, the Titanic artist where he talks about loving the hands. It's really true. Some artists really love preferring one part of the body over another. For me, it's the hair. I love drawing the hair. Alrighty. I think we can just move on to the final stage of the, uh, the what's it called? The fine, fine details. This is actually pretty short. Very small and easy to do. Because we already uh, we already got the shading, we already got the lighting, we already got our big details in, and our me medium details in. Now we can actually add in some fine hair, because all this other stuff is already in place. It's actually pretty easy. If you start the fine hair early on, your hair will look like like straw. It will look like straw, and I know. If you look at my early artwork, my, that my hair did actually look like straw. I didn't develop the hair like I did now, and that's why I'm sharing my information with you, so you don't do the same mistakes I did and actually progress faster than I did. Here we go. All right, for the fine details, it's the same technique as we did before, from light to dark, except we're going a little bit harder, brush, and the brush size a little bit smaller. And we're actually doing not that many of them. We're actually going a little bit random as well. As you can see right here, we just have a little few brush strokes. We don't want to be too much. 
and we're actually going to like beyond the hair like looping back in there we go light to dark just a few strands just a few strands just like that and we're already done see how easy that was and because of these few strands of hair if it, it, it the it creates an illusion like there's a thousand strands of hair you see you see how it looks like a thousand strands of hair especially when you zoom out because this is the zoom level that people would be looking at your art they're not going to be going right up against a strand here look counting every piece of strand of hair that's not how art is viewed you actually see it at a, a full point of view at a full scale that's why I recommend just a few strands of hair because it all blends together anyways alright let's add a few strands of hair here going a little bit loopy going up and back in up and back in just imagining how the hair is random in real life the hair will be random here and we may even add a, a couple of stray hairlines a couple of stray hair that actually goes out and beyond the edge the borders of the hair just like that just a few strands just a few strands and this is where it gets fun we see we have our uh, our bright hair our bright hair and our dark hair we can even pick a mid-tone color and use that instead of a bright white and have it overreaching into the dark areas just like that it creates some depth it creates an illusion of depth you see that same thing with the dark hair overlapping itself but you don't go from dark to the bright like that but you can do it right here with the dark hair and the light hair is a little bit the same level you can overlap itself just like that and this is where it gets a little tricky adding this last strays of hair at the end out of curiosity whose hair you like drawing the most hmm I'll say Pinkie Pie because I give her a bit of a curly hairstyle it's very fun trying to figure out how to make her hair sense how to make it sense after Pinkie Pie I'll say it would be Rainbow Dash just some multiple colors as a challenge trying to differentiate them and overlapping them there we go just a few strands just a few strands as you can see the hair is actually looking very real and we're not going we're not doing this just like a whole bunch of straight lines we're trying to be flowy we're trying to be organic with it just a few strands here and there and we may add a crazy wild single strand of hair that just like goes against the flow of, uh, of the rest of the hair just a couple of those same thing with this area if we have our light hair and the dark hair we can actually all do some overlapping just like that it's fun it's fun trying to figure this stuff out there we go just like that just a few strands of hair maybe I should delete those okay I'm undoing that I'm not going to put any strands of hair inside the darkness as I mentioned before some areas you actually may leave very you know undetailed because it's on it's like unimportant areas of the of the hair alrighty let's overlap some of these hair grooves just like that 
And now we're approaching the air. I'm about to approach too much detail. So I better stop here real soon. There we go. And there we go. Alrighty. Now the next thing I'm going to teach you, you can actually uh, do early on at the drawing, not like not at this stage. I just want to bring it up later. It's uh, blending the colors of the hair with its surrounding uh, elements, other things around the hair, like the sky, the the face of the of the person, the uh, maybe a surrounding object, stuff like that. It really blends the color in together. Um, Let's say that Fluttershy is in a is outside. So we have a sky just like that. What size brush do you have for the details? It's uh, just it's just small. You don't have to go like a specific size. You just have to test it out, and experiment, and see what what size is too small or too big. All right, we got our sky. Let's quickly add in Fluttershy's yellow face. It really does uh, play an element in the detail here. Turn off my opacity. Okay. Just real quick, you don't have to do this. It's just to emphasize a point. And, okay, wrong layer. Okay. There we go. Let's erase some areas of the hair. So it kind of fits alongside the face a little bit. Okay. The reason why I painted the, the yellow the yellow body of Fluttershy is that she is yellow. And the hair has some reflection properties, especially if it's um, especially if gel is added to it. So, with light coming at an angle, such as let's say right here, the light's going to go and bounce off her her forehead and bounce right back onto her hair. And the same thing happens when it bounces off from her hair back onto her ear light bounces everywhere and how much it bounces is another is another is another lesson in the future so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking that yellow setting the hardness down to maybe let's say 20 in around the 20 percent area set turn back on our uh, pressure to opacity control and with broad strokes again maybe decrease opacity. We don't want too much color out of this. Just very slightly in the shadow area. We're going to add some yellows with a big brush. Just some yellows. Very, very faint. We don't want too much. There we go. Just like that. Things in real life colors overlap each other, they bounce off of each other and it helps marry the drawing, the, the, the material that you're drawing into the, the canvas. That's a term used in the artist world, marry together, you know, combine, where it's like you can tell they're together. There we go. We got some yells in fault. Let's do some more yellows right here. All right, there we go. Just very faintly, we have some yellows. And as I mentioned before, light bounces everywhere. So even a little bit of the pink goes back onto her ear. Just very slightly, very slightly. It goes back onto her ear. 
All right, same thing like over here. Maybe we actually pick a bit of an orange since we're going to an even darker area. Very subtly add some orange into her hair. There we go. Since it's reflecting off of her face, the colors off of her face, just like that. Might have added a little bit too much, but that's all right. We just blend it out. There we go. Just like that. We got some lighting involved. Don't want to overblend it. We'll just lose the color. You don't want to lose the color. Maybe a few strong yellows here and there. That's about it. All right. And finally, another area we can work on is the reflection of the sky. Since the sky is blue, we'll be grabbing some blue. And just as we did before, we're going to be painting it right on top of the hair. Since we're going to a very bright area, we're going to use some very bright blues. Very softly, with a big brush, set to normal. We're painting some blues onto her hair. There we go. That just that just really makes the image work. It really ties it together, having the uh, picking the colors from around the canvas and mixing it together. It really really makes the image pop, and and adds the illusion that it's realistic. Like I say, the background you're in a brown-ish scene or you have a sunset you'll be using oranges if you're in the if it's dark and there is a purple light somewhere around this image you use in purple it's, it's just how it's just how it works so we added some blues and it actually tie desaturated the pink a little to the correct um, saturation level that we want so we don't have too much saturation happening um, let's take a back blue. Let's add some blues back here again. There we go. There we go. Just some blues right there. All right, let's add some rim lighting to touch it up all together. Just a couple of rim light strokes. Rim light, rim lighting. Want too much rim lighting, but it really puts it together. And there we go. Mm, this looks a bit too messy right here. I want to use a bigger brush and blend that in. There we go. I'm going to be using the dodge tool. Very rare I use it, but sometimes it works real well. I had to range set the highlights and exposure at 20%. The brush is soft and that big. I'm just very lightly brush on top. Whoops. I got out of the dodge tool. Okay. Very lightly brush on top to make it really bright. There we go. Just very, very slight. Very slight. Very slightly. Now we're going to switch to the burn tool, do the same thing with the burn areas. Very slightly. We're just adding a little bit more contrast here. And it seems like hair does a good job with the burn and dodge tool. If you do it with the face, not so much. Not so much. There we go. Just a few strokes of the brush and dodge tool. We didn't go overboard. And the hair has a lot more contrast to it. We lost some contrast right here when we went with the, the uh, dodge tool. So we're going to add, add it back in. There we go. We're going to add that back in. And we're done. Officially done. 
So I feel like I can continue working on this, pushing it a little bit more realistically, make things work. But you got to know just when to stop. <laughs> you just got to stop. Uh, all right. I'm going to do a quick render of this side of the hair. Uh, just so I can go on my normal full speed and you can see everything I just taught in, in action. And as I'm doing that, we're going. I, I can answer some questions. Make sure you use bold to answer, ask the questions. How big is the canvas? Um, I have for 2,500 pixels. I sometimes go a bit bigger. It the more pixels, more the more better you can have color blending details. Thank you. As I mentioned before, don't worry if you're slow at it. It takes some time. I had a lot of practice under my belt. What's the difference between the overlay and luminosity layer? Why pick one over the other? Uh, I don't quite understand the blend layers perfectly. I just know what the effect is. Uh, I never use luminosity. It doesn't really does the effect I want. Overlay, it kind of does like a, it kind of brightens, brightens and saturates the color at the same time. Um, Sometimes if I want to brighten the area but not saturate it, I'll choose screen over overlay. Sometimes if I want to bring the saturation up in the area, I will use uh, soft light instead. As I mentioned before, uh, you I know you hate this term so much. <laughs> you got to experiment, see what works, what happens, see what does not work. Even look up some tutorials because there's a lot of tutorials explaining the differences between the two. What tablet and program are you using? I'm using a Cintiq, the exact model is Cintiq 24HD. You do not need this kind of Cintiq to work in digitally. You can use a Intuis or Intuis Pro. That's what they call their, Wacom calls their models now. It's no longer Bamboo Intuis, it's Intuis and Intuis Pro. Um, for beginning artists, I recommend uh, Intuis or Intuis Pro, not the Cintiq yet. I, the Cintiq is more for people who draws more than um, three times a week and it's, wants to be serious about getting to uh, digital art. Though some pros actually don't even use the Cintiq and they prefer to use Twist Pro. So it's not something that you absolutely need for art. The program I'm using it is Photoshop CS6. I haven't got, I haven't picked the CC versions yet because the new features isn't really geared towards art so I have no real use for getting an upgrade unless I want to do some extensive photo touching but CSX is just good enough for me I know some artists actually is um, still using CS3 and they're perfectly happy with it so just because something's new does not mean it's like exactly what you need all right, let's see. What tablet program? I want to see tablet. I can't afford it. Any other questions? Make sure you set the questions into bold. Right now, I'm getting into uh, the mode where I'm detailing the clumps of hair. I'm separating the pieces of hair into clumps, in case you're wondering. Yeah, I can. I I can work faster at this. I was I was purposely kinda going a little bit slow for you guys so you can understand what I'm doing. Now I'm a little bit more at full speed here. Do I got any other questions? Got any other questions? 
questions for me. So instead, I'm saving for a laptop and bamboo like my sister pencil pony artist. That's a good thing to save up for. Don't forget that you can still draw traditionally. Paper and pencil is still relatively cheap. And you don't need the most fanciest of programs either or the fanciest of tablets to draw. You just draw. You just draw. Did you ever have a different method for drawing hair? Yes. I mentioned it before, I, I used to go right into detailing with the uh, fine detail hair, which made my hair look very, um, like, straw, look like straw. And over time, I learned, my, I, I learned some, I was doing some mistakes in rendering. Like, I used to use dodge and burn tool for actually drawing the strands of hair, which does not really quite look so good. My method now is completely different compared to how I drew as a beginner. You may even find a better, better method than the one I provided, because it takes some time. It takes some time. Can I have this as a full finished pick for stuff? I got plenty of money. <laughs> light to dark, light to dark. I use pencils and paper, but the pics on my phone don't look that great. That's not a question, Charmer. Please turn off bold. I'm focusing on the people with the bold questions. Are you going to be doing any more tutorials anytime soon? Uh, as if, if time allows. I'm, I'm always very busy getting ready for the next con or doing some freelance artwork or doing some work for some, some image packs. So I have to plan it. I have to actually plan it. I would like to try to get into teaching how to do some coloring soon since I know there's a lot of things I uh, sidestepped for this tutorial uh, on coloring in itself there's a lot of things you need to learn how to not make a uh, drawing look muddy or make things pop I'll probably be going into color theory which I probably gonna have to research a little bit on so I'm more accurate in my explanation because a lot of this I just learn on the go and it's just embedded in my mind there we go and let's add some there we go a little bit more a little bit more all right fur that's a little tricky like I mentioned before it's easier if I mention about it's easier to talk about the color theory before adding into getting the detail about well details I found a method how to do fur by experimenting as I I can't express this enough experiment you know don't wait for a tutorial to teach you how to do something play around the brushes see what happens do a full drawing with one brush to see if you can do something with it. Maybe you like that brush later because of your experiments. You, you never know. Do you think you will do a ton of complementary colors using triads, tetrads, and stuff? Yeah, like I said before, uh, I'm going to have to do some research so I can accurately do s examples like that. I don't really use triads and triangles it's more embedded in my mind now because I practice so much with it that I don't have it popped up all over my screen for reference anymore not saying that you should not do that because if you don't under have an understanding of something make sure you have your reference nearby make sure you have your reference I didn't use reference for the hair here because I've done a ton of drawings using references before so I recommend you actually pull up some references of hair while you're doing the drawing of hair. It really helps. It really helps. 
There we go, now we're getting some fine detail in. Do you use this brush for clouds or a different brush? Eh, I go on and off with this one brush that's that's a bit like it's like a, a clumpy shape that's soft for brushing clouds. But I'm still experimenting with clouds. I don't have a solid method yet. So I can't really make a tutorial on clouds yet because I haven't found a true process to doing it. I'm still experimenting on it. Set the mode to normal. Now we're getting into the fine details here. Light to dark, dark to light. Light to dark, dark to light. Making sure the hair is in 3D as oval. So your hair overlaps itself right here. You see that? Once you get the process going and understanding how to use the brushes and how to layer the coloring and the shading down, the process becomes much easier and faster. Of course, you can't get to that level without the, the practicing and the experimenting. Yep. Two big things. Practice, experiment, practice, experiment, practice, experiment. And I hope no one here is feeling like, oh, woe well, is me, I can't draw this good. I started with stick figures. It took me quite a bit of time, years even, to figure this stuff out. And I'm hoping this video, this live tutorial, will give you a good jump start. A good jump start in figuring things, these things out. This is what the video's meant, the main purpose is just give you a jump start and understanding. It's not a video designed to make you suddenly better. It's not meant for that. It's not a video where it's like the the absolute method and drawing realistic hair. It's not a video that is the end of all your problems. <laughs> It's just a, a video to get you started, get you an idea how one artist does hair. Many artists does hair differently. There's many ways of going about this. This is just one of them. Some artists go black and white and then they add color. Some people, some artists use texture brushes that does many tricks for them and they figure it out because they experimented. I know a few techniques myself, but I like this the most because it gives me the best, best results. I'm adding the fine detail. Remember I mentioned that's just a few strands of hair, not a lot. 
just enough to indicate there's something there. It gives the illusion that there's a ton of detail when there's really not. I like adding the strands of hair over blurry, unfinished areas. Give the illusion that it's all finished. It's a bit of like a cheat. <laughs> Making it look like you finished the area real quick. And a few wild and crazy hairs like I mentioned before. Woo! There goes that crazy hair, no! Not too much. It's not messy hair. Going from the light hair to the dark. There we go. Can you please post both hair tutorial videos on YouTube? No, I think I'll just upload this one, unfortunately. The other one was a bit more... It was a bit more random. I felt this one that you guys got a lot more out of it. When you draw shapes that are 2 be 3 d do you add the depth part of it later, or do you make the shape bigger for the start and shade out the depth later on? Hope it's not too vague. Uh, I, I understand you. I actually did that. It was... Um, I did start off with big blocks, big parts of the hair as big shapes. As you saw right here, I had some big pieces of hair that I just... I just uh, I shaded perfectly, so to speak, and then I added some details. I make the hair into big shapes first before adding any smaller, smaller details. All right. And as I mentioned before, the hair absorbs color from ar around. So I'm gonna add some, uh, ah, that's too bright. I'm gonna add some oranges right here to reflect the natural yellow of Fluttershy's face and her neck, just like so. I'm going to add some yellow right here. It really helps tie things together, the whole image. And gives the illusion that the hair fits in the image. It just, it like, it belongs there. It's not like you have, it's not like Fluttershy's wearing a wig that is in 3D and the 3D artist forgot to add in color settings for color lighting to the 3D object. Just like that. And some blues. Bright blues onto the hair. Luna Celestia hair. <laughs> You're pretty much drawing space with that. Devlin needs experiment. Some, pe some artists makes it like actual hair like I'm doing right now. Other artists do like a mix between like flowy energy to flowy energy to just pure space. So I'm using I'm adding some blue, normal brush mode, no fancy settings. The brush is uh, yeah about soft. I'm controlling the opacity by the uh, my pressure of my pen. I'm going this very softly. I'm not adding too much color to it. And there we go. Oh yeah, dodge and burn. Add some burn very, very softly. Very softly. Add the tip of the hair right there. And there's some dodge tool, very soft. Ooh, there we go. <laughs> that sounded pretty funny. Uh, there we go. Uh, I actually did a better job with this one than I did on this side. Seems, uh, when I just go at it, naturally, I go at it, it seems to come out a lot better than I did with this sign. So, yep. More practice, it gets you better results. So I did this, and then, and then I did this. It's just natural progression, because I already had in mind how I did this right here. And then I did this the second time. Oh, that hair, that, that hair looks better. You'll find the same thing when you do your own practice. Your first drawings is going to look... Um, bad compared to your later drawings that's why you just keep practicing because your your bad drawings gets just just gets out of you and you have more understanding more knowledge inside of your mind your hand uh, your muscle memory is more intact your it's just basically you get more knowledge out of it the more you practice make sure you sleep well make sure you get good sleep good um, good proper sleep because it allows your mind your brain absorb what you learn for today um, 
uh, yeah, any other questions before we wrap this up? Oh yeah, I want to open something up right here. All right, let's see. The, the tutorial I did last time was on Rainbow Dash's hair. I want to make a brief mention, see how the yellow clumps of hair overlap the brown, the orange, the orange hair overlap the red, and so on and so forth. I did the same process with this like I did with Fluttershy's face. Yeah, it will take you hours. It's a long process. That's why I always encourage people to practice realism. If you practice realism, your cartoon coloring will even benefit. Just watch. Your, uh, like your comic coloring style can benefit when you practice realism. And see, it looks like people are leaving. Thank you guys for coming by. I'm glad to do this tutorial for you guys. This took some time to do, I know. It took about eh, about an hour and a half to do finish. But I'm sure it was worth it for those who stick who sticked it all the way to the end and watched the whole thing. Thank you guys for coming by. If you missed it, I will be uploading the tutorial on my YouTube channel later. It's the same name, T Citra 360. I will be uploading that. You're welcome, NECA. You're welcome. Bye, Charmer. Bye, Tardis. Bye, everyone. Thank you for coming. <laughs>